Okay, a very short video on how to do secondary highlighting. Secondary highlighting is basically what you do when you start using washes and you learn how to use them effectively. It doesn't need to be on anything that actually has a lot of texture to it. It can just be a very basic, um, a basic paint job. So for this, what we're going to do is we're actually going to highlight this guy's teeth right here. Okay, we're going to paint them in, and that's going to be including the gradient. Okay, so the gradient is basically where it goes from a dark to a light, and it's what makes it look very realistic. All right. So whenever you're doing something like this, you're going to start off with a base coat. Now, in a lot of cases, you will see videos out there where they start with a far darker base coat than I think is always necessary. If you're going to wash something, it's going to turn dark anyway. You don't really need to do a, uh, a really dark base coat. So in this case, we're using Ushapti Bone, which is a uh, the bone color from Citadel. Okay, and uh, it's it, it's absolutely fine to start off with this stuff. Okay, so and I'm going to be a little bit messy here, only because we are trying to just kind of get through this. So um, there we go. Paint it in. Okay, and. You want to just make sure that when you do it, you have a pretty decent uh, coat, meaning that it is solid, um, so you don't have to go back over it again. Now, the same thing would apply if you were to do this guy's horns, uh, depending on exactly what look you're looking for. Okay, and I'll probably cut some of this out as I put it in front of the fan to uh, dry. Now, the other things that we're going to be using, why this is uh, drying real quick, and there's going to be a bit of drying in this, and what I mean by that is going to have to let a few things dry. So we're, first we're going to hit it up with an Agrax Earth Shade. Okay, Agrax Earth Shade doesn't really necessarily shade the color very much, but it's going to give a dark color to what is closest to the transition of shapes. That means, at least on this particular one where the teeth and the gums connect, you want that to be relatively dark. You don't want it to be a different color, but you want it to be dark. This is going to get you that darkness. Once that dries, you're going to hit it with the Seraphim Sepia. Seraphim Sepia is going to make it uh, kind of old and, and, and worn down look. Once the Sepia has dried, we're going to go back in with the base coat again, okay? And it's going to be extremely thinned down, and you're going to slowly kind of, from the tip, you're going to put light, light coats on from the tip and then uh, move towards the base of the feature, whatever it is, uh, to lighten it up but not to have any distinct lines, paint lines between where it started and where it transitions. And you'll see exactly what I mean, but if my thumb were the tooth here, okay? You paint the whole thing, and then right here at the base where you put the Agrax Earth Shade, you have a very dark kind of transition, and the rest of it is covered with sepia. And then you get this base coat, and you start from the tip, and you kind of paint down, and less paint as you go down, very thin down, so that it's a it's a very smooth gradient going up. And the last thing you do is you work in a highlight. This in case is Mellon White Highlight, which is very good uh, for bones. And you're going to do the same thing. You might mix it with this first. You may not mix it with it. It really just depends. But again, light shade, and you're just highlighting the very tips. Okay? So here's our model, and I think the tooth is uh, is dry. or dry enough, hopefully. We're about to find out because if it's not dry and you put a shade on it, it's going to basically turn all milky, and it kind of makes a big mess. So we're about to find out. And with this one, you don't have to be particularly neat. You're just going to slap it on. Okay. And again, it doesn't shade the whole entire thing. But you see what I'm talking about is that if I could bring it closer, and if it's going to focus, there we go. You have that very dark um, color that's right near the base of the teeth. Let me move my light away just a little bit. I think the light's a little intense. Alright, so we have this very dark color right where the gum line is. And and in between the teeth.
and you can make it darker or lighter depending on how much you want. Like that. Okay? It's focusing on my finger, not the damn model. Huh? There we go. And again, you're going to have to let it dry. Now, this is something you're going to do kind of in stages. So you're going to do that, you're going to put it down to dry, move on to something else, so forth, you know, and so on and so forth, and uh, be able to kind of work through your miniature. So something that is. It's a building piece, and you know, as you're painting a model, let's say this one right here, okay, you're going to kind of learn the pieces that you can do. So maybe what you're going to do is you're going to do this part, and I won't put my finger because it's confusing, but say you're going to do this little cloth right here, okay, so that was painted with a the khaki, then it was washed with the serif sepia. While the sepia is drying, I might go and I might paint this, the bell, the copper bell, right, and then maybe I'll move on to a little bit of the black, and then once that's done, I can come back and do any secondary highlighting on that that I want. Okay, same thing with the uh, the wood on here is, is a good example, right? So if you see the wood, it's hopefully, you can see it, it's got a little bit of a highlight to it. So it was a base coat and then a wash on top of it and then it was dry brush. So same thing, paint it, move on to something else, say the red over here, come back put a wash on it, do the silver here, come back do the dry brush, and then move on. So you're kind of hopping back and forth between pieces of the model. This is really what adds a lot of time to your model, to tell you the truth, when you're doing something. Uh, it's moving back and forth between those pieces where you actually have to let it dry. Sometimes if you do an assembly line painting, you do want to go ahead and do, you know, like three or four models at a time. You want to do all the same things and then let it dry overnight. And then you can come back to it the next day and, 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 and move on. So this wash is going to take probably a few minutes to dry. So what we'll do is I'm going to cut it off here and I'll come back. Now I was trying my hands at 15 millimeter uh, miniatures. So here's a standard uh, Warhammer 28 millimeter miniature, right? And even some of the detail on this can become a little bit, uh, you know, difficult sometimes. We, oh, so we think. Here is a set of 28 millimeter miniatures right here. So you can see the, the size difference, right? These are tiny little things um, as, you know, compared in size with uh, just a normal 28 millimeter miniature. And this is my first go ever at 28 millimeter miniatures. Uh, this is a it's a German infantry squad. Um, it's a different painting technique. It's a painting technique where the details aren't as important, but the technique is just as important. Um, not sure if that makes any sense whatsoever. But, uh, so, and if I come up close, focus on close, you can see that the, or not see, the actual details on them are not quite as picked out as it would be on 28mm miniature, but at a distance, that's the way they look. So, different technique, new, maybe it will help in my overall. Alright, try a new lighting source. Hopefully this will, uh, this will help. So, my guy's teeth are done with the focus. There we go, sort of. There we are. So you can see how it's very dark near the base and not so much near the rest of it. Okay, that's kind of what we want. So we're going to go back in with the serif from Sepia now. And same thing, we're going to paint the entire thing. And this serif from Sepia, at least from Games Workshop, tends to shade a little bit more, which means it's going to actually make the colors change. So you're going to get a color transition as well.
one or two clouds. If it were in like real daylight, it'd probably make a little bit more sense. But there, let's get my hand out of the damn way. It looks like it does pretty good. Huh? If you want it to look dirtier, you let it dry for a few seconds and you go back over it again. Okay. And let that dry. Okay, so it is finished drying. And I'll bring it up there. You can see now it almost doesn't need anything. You can see that transition now between the, uh, the, the, the dark and, uh, and, and the light. But in order to really make it pop, you do want to do a little bit more. So again, we're going to get our original color. And I don't really have a palette anywhere near. I'm not going to do a whole entire wet palette. So I'm going to kind of wing this a little bit. Um, you get some very thin down, and I don't mean watery, but well thin down of, your, of, the, of the base color. Okay? And then what you're going to do, hopefully this is going to be as in focus, you're going to start from the tip. And you're going to slowly kind of work it down. And you're going to use some discretion on where exactly you do it. Because what you don't want is you don't want that line of paint to kind of show through really strongly. You want it to be a transitional thing to go from dark to light. And it's going to look a lot more... Um, appropriate, if you will, uh, uh, on the bigger features. So on some of the smaller features, maybe you don't need to do it as much. But on the bigger features, I would. Okay, And then I'm going to go ahead and without cleaning my brush in this case, again, you can transition up however you want. I'm going to get some of that Menoth White highlight. Again, still thin down. Okay. Don't need to let this dry. I'm going to hit the very tips of it. All the way until basically the very tip of these teeth are the Menoth White Highlight color. And you may need to go back a few times. You may need to kind of play with the colors and and, and that kind of stuff. As I'm finding, I have to hear because I kind of did a little bit too much. That's basically it. What I'll do is I'll take some pictures here to kind of show you what it is supposed to look like. And that's basically it.